Presenting Lloyd Nolan as Johnny Strange and Claire Trevor as Terry Travis in another adventure of Results Incorporated. Sooner or later, every man must learn this sad fact. Come storm, come flood, come fire, come bill collectors. A woman will make that trip to the beauty parlor. At this moment, Teresa Travis, blonde secretary of Results Incorporated, is receiving the expert attention of Monsieur Jean Gillette, hairstylist extraordinary. Terry watches his progress in the mirror. No. Uh, no, no, Jean. Eh? I want my hair higher, more upsweet. Oh. oh, yes, yes. I'm so sorry. Uh, more like uh, this? Mm, no, no, that's not it either. Oh, Jean, you know what I like. Use your imagination. Uh, today I do not feel creative. A woman's hair does not move me. Why, Jean, I thought you would live for your art. Well, art is all right, but uh, now I have the chance to make $2,500, and I can't do anything about it. Well, that's a pretty expensive can't. What's wrong? Well, uh... I promise you won't tell any of the ladies, Miss Travis? Yes, I promise. Well, you see, I got a letter this morning from Lear magazine. They said they would pay me $2,500 for an interview and pictures of my old home. Why, Jean, I didn't know you were famous. Oh, I'm not, Miss Travis, but my family is notorious. Uh, maybe you have heard of the Bloody Galettes? The Bloody Galettes. Oh, the Galettes and the, uh, uh, the Cobble. Uh, the old feuding families in the Black Swamp. Yes, I read about it in the newspapers. That is right. You see, Monsieur Jean Galette, your hairdresser, is really, without the phony French accent, Jean Galette, last of the bloody Galettes. <laughs> oh, this is wonderful. Oh, dear. Oh, but, but why all this sudden interest from the magazine? Well, you see, they've heard that the last man of the Cobber family just died. Yes. So they want to run an article on the end of the galette Cobber feud. I see. Complete with an interview and your picture. Yes. Oh, but look at me, Miss Travis. I'm a meek little guy. I'm only five feet two inches tall. Why, it takes five different vitamins just to get me out of bed in the morning. <laughs> and then three more to support my mustache. <laughs> Oh, I know I don't look like a bloody galette. <laughs> I look more like a floor walker in the infant's wear department. Oh, dear. About as bloodthirsty as a catnip mouse. Yes. Hmm? <laughs> but for $2,500. No, no, Miss Travis. I can't let them publish a picture of me. Why, every galette would turn over in his grave, clear back to great-grandfather Zedekiah. Why, if the magazine people saw me, they'd... Mm, I, uh, I just wonder... You know, maybe this is a case for Results Incorporated. You mean, maybe... You could help me somehow? Yes. If there's one hole in the fence, Johnny Strange will find it. And if there isn't, he'll make one. Oh, dear. Well, I'd certainly like to get that $2,500. Now, if I could keep the family reputation... Oh, I... you could keep the reputation, but uh, maybe not the whole $2,500. Uh, we charge a fee, you know. Oh, well, I'd be glad to pay that. Well, then what are we waiting for? Get your hat. Come on! <laughs> Just let me get this straight, Terry. I'm to go down to this uh, blank, uh, black swamp place, pose as Jean Gillette, the last of the bloody Gillettes, give an interview to the magazine, and have my picture taken. Yep, that's the deal. And, and I'll go along as your chauffeur, Mr. Mm -hmm. Strange. You see, that way I can coach you in everything you need to know. Uh, Terry Miguel, I'm uh, afraid you stayed under that hair dryer just a wee bit too long. The brains, you know? Oh, now, Johnny, I know what you're thinking. Somebody might say that you don't look like Jean Gillette. But that's all fixed. He hasn't been in Corbisville since he was a boy. Oh, no. My mother was afraid I'd get killed, so she brought me to the city before I could get dragged into the feud. Well, I suppose I could put on a rough, tough act. You, you'll do it, Mr. Strang? Oh, of course he will. Oh, that's wonderful. Then I'll telegraph to Berta Ross that we'll be in Corbisville tomorrow afternoon. Well, who is uh, Berta Ross? Uh, she's the writer for Lear magazine. Uh, they told me she's down there right now collecting material for the story. Mm, I suppose I'd better take along walking shoes. And let's see, a couple of old dresses. Uh, 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 hold it, sugar, hold it. This party is going to be strictly stag. I beg your pardon, Mr. Strange. My contract with results says 25% of the profits and 50% of the fun. But you, you can't go, Miss Travis. You see, I haven't got a wife. Oh, you're going to have one, Mr. Gillette. Or rather, Johnny is. 
You all know them bloody galettes. Why, they got a heap of yearning for the women folks. Never believe another road sign. Two more miles to Corbusville. Oh, it was right, Miss Travis. We're in Corbusville right now. In it? Well, where is it? Well, actually, there isn't any town. It's it's just that general store uh, right ahead of us. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> hey, pipe the sign over the front porch. Hmm, Bill, Billy Gundle store. Staples, hardware, post office, seed, kerosene, justice of the peace, tobacco, and embalming. <laughs> The local feed and feud store. Oh. Say, I uh, wonder if Billy's store includes one Miss Berta Ross. Well, uh, maybe that old man sitting on the porch would know. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, mister, hi there. Hey, talking to me, young fella. Uh, yeah, you know where we can uh, find a lady named Berta Ross? At a scribbling woman? That's right. She's inside. Come over there, you're late. Mm, good-looking redhead. Now, darling, don't forget, you've got a wife. Gosh, I hope we can get away with this act. It'd be dreadful if something went wrong. I was beginning to think you weren't coming down to this dreary, bleary hole... Uh, you, Jean Gallette? Hmm? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, this is the wife, and Jones, our chauffeur. How do you do? Well, the Gallettes have come up in the world. Glad to meet you. I've got a guy with a flatboat waiting to take us across the swamp to your ancestral shack. Good. We're ready whenever you are. All right. I hey. put in a phone call, and i better check and see if it's come through. Uh, do you know if my call's come through all right? Oh, uh, uh, Miss Ross. Uh, Miss Ross, uh, there's your, your telephone. Yes, it's come through. Okay. If you'll excuse me a minute, I'll see about Certainly. it. Certainly. Take all your right, time. Right. We'll go down to the boat as soon as I'm through. Hey, reckon this is the first time we done got a telephone clean to New York. And it's the last time if it depends on Berta Ross. Yeah, it is just all right, boss, young woman. Uh, oh, the phone's right over there. Hello? Ed? Yeah, Berta. Yes, he arrived. Mm mm. With a wife, darn it. But listen, Ed, we got a bump steer on the story. Old Chuck Colby, the last of the clan, didn't drown. He's still alive. Of course I'm sure. Listen, I hired old Colby to take Jean Gillette out to the swamp place. Oh, sure, there's going to be trouble. Mm mm, not that kind. Don't worry. I won't tip them off. I'm going to get a story one way or another. <laughs> Is that our uh, flatboat, the one with the old guy and the dog in it? That's right. He's waiting for us. He looks like Rip Van Winkle, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Beard, slouch hat, chore and tobacco and everything. He looks sort of fierce to me. He has a mad gleam in his eye. I hope nothing slips up. Meddling in somebody else's feud is sort of dangerous business. What feud? All the coppers are dead. You've got nothing to worry about. All right, Chuck. Ready to go. Get in. All right, you first, Harry. All right. You know, if nobody objects, I, I think I'll sit up here in front. That's right. Hey, hey, watch it, Jones. Don't fall overboard. It's an awfully small boat, isn't it? And so low in the water. <laughs> Must we have that dog in the boat, too? There I go. Daniel goes. All right, Chuck, let's go. The galette place. Darling, look. He's going to push the boat with a pole, just like a gondolier in Venice. Mm -hmm. Oh. Golly, it's, it's dark in this swamp. Yeah, it is. Uh, with you, fellas, uh, Galette. Guilty, Your Honor. Uh, what's that? <laughs> I am. I'm Galette. Uh, remember you when you was a young man? Is that right? Before uh, your ma took you off. Yeah, that's all. Uh, Mr. Galette, I've been checking up around here on this so-called feud. Frankly, I think the Galette Carver families took it out in... Uh, Tall talk. Oh, no, no. Oh, that is... I mean, well, it I, uh, I, depends on what you call tall talk, Miss Ross. You uh, see, uh, Grandpappy Zeke talked seven corvas into rather permanent silence. Seven? Well, uh, eight, that is. If you want to count the guy that Grandpappy made eat mud and then swallow a planting of cactus seeds. Yes, you see, every galette had to kill three corvas to earn his silver wings. Yes, but I understand that the corvas ran up a higher box score than the galette. <laughs> Oh, gracious, I wonder what's wrong with our boatman. He, he acts as though he's strangling. Maybe he swallowed his tobacco the wrong way. Mm. As I started to say, maybe the old timers were bloodthirsty enough, but, well, I must say, Mr. Gillette, you look thoroughly civilized and distinct. Uh, well, my husband is just more polished. But underneath, I bet he wouldn't kill a cobra if he saw one. What would mm. you do, Mr. Gillette? What would I do? Say, I just wish I could meet up with one. 
I'd take a cross-cut saw to him. I'd cut him up in a stove length. I'd splinter him in the... Oh, 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 oh. Heavens, that dog. He sounds like a lost soul. Get up, Daniel. Daniel's best corpse hound in these here swamps. Don't howl that away without there's a corpse around. Corpse? Or somebody a going to be. Oh, well, can't, can't we find something nicer to talk about? There you are, children. The Galette homestead dead ahead. Now oh, it's completely surrounded by swamps. Yeah, the man's in the mush. You can hardly see it for the trees and hanging moss. Get ready to jump. I'm going to hit the landing. Okay, Terry, jump. I made it. Yeah, let me give you a hand, Miss Ross. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's good to be on solid ground again. Johnny. Yeah. Johnny, the boatman, he's pushing off. Hey, hey, don't leave us here. You're going home for my galette gun. You're good. What's that? Can't kill a galette except with my feuding gun. This feuding gun? Hey! Say, what's your name? Corba. Old Chuck Corba. <laughs> Corba. What? Well, th- th- then he's. Oh, Johnny. <laughs> Back to Johnny Strange and Terry Travis in just a moment. And now, back to Results Incorporated, starring Claire Trevor and Lloyd Nolan. In their youth and innocence, Johnny and Terry have blundered into a deadly feud in the black swamps. Right now, Johnny is staring down the barrel of a mean-looking squirrel gun. Uh, uh, l- look, Mr. Corby, you you got me all wrong. I'm I'm not a galette. I'm Johnny Strange. That's you, galette, always was fishy tongue when it come to dying. Johnny, show him your driver's license. Yeah, yeah, here. Here, now, you, you can read it for yourself. Here. Yeah, very interesting. Well, now, you believe me, huh? Can't read it. Oh, I can't read it. Oh, okay, Miss Ross, you read it to him. Here. All right. Uh-huh. It says Johnny Strange, all right, but that doesn't mean anything. You just sneak back to the black swamps with another guy's papers. Oh, for the love Mr. of... Mr. Jones, you can identify Johnny. <coughs> well, can't you, Mr. Jones? Well, I... I uh, oh, golly. Hey, 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 that was my hat. I saw you edging away, Mr. Gillespie. You stay right here. Oh, I... Oh, well, that was a real bullet. Why, you dang let's come back here anyway. I ain't had to kill one of your breed in 20 years. Was figuring to spend a peaceful old age. Well, you can keep it peaceful as far as I'm concerned. No, I can't. You're a collect and I've got to kill you. Darn it all. It's your fault, Miss Ross. Poking your nose and other folks is shooting. Surely you're not serious. Johnny or Gene or whatever his name is might be telling the truth. You wouldn't want to kill the wrong man, Mr. Carver. Of course I don't. What, you'll take me for a murderer? Well, if, if you'll let us go back to the mainland, you can get on the telephone and, and talk to Johnny's friends. Uh, they'll tell you who he is. No, siree. That's just another galette trick. Well, then send somebody back and let them find out for you. I'll go, or, or Miss Ross here. Mm, I don't know. Swamp ain't fit for a woman. Maybe I might let this little person here go. Who, me? You. Oh, but... Oh, the swamp? I, I wouldn't know what to... Uh, uh-huh. how to... Uh-huh. Oh. Well, if you say so. All right. You just go to Bill Gungle's store and have him telephone and find out who this fella is. Then you bring Billy out here. So as I can know for sure, Billy's a friend of mine. Yes, sir. And if you try and fetch help, I'll carve what you get it and feed it to my dog. You hear? Your dog? Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, uh, look, would, would you let us talk to Jones and, and tell him who to telephone? Go ahead. Talking won't hurt. Oh, uh, fine. Now, write down this telephone number, Jones. Listen, call the sheriff. The sheriff, the militia, the army, anybody. I'm going to. I'll get you out somehow. Good. You saved me now. Get you after him. Get going. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. My boat's tied up at the landing. Don't you go steering it into no mud flats. I, I hope not. Oh, oh, it's almost dark. I won't be able to find my way. Go on before I shoot your heels I'm off. I'm going, I'm going. That's better. Now you three, 
Get upstairs and get to bed. Hmm? What? Uh... Oh, but Jones will be back in a couple of hours. It's only half past six. I ain't been going to bed at half past six for 70 years, and I ain't stopping now. Get it on. Oh, no, no, but listen. Cut you Co- cross uh... that. I said get to bed. Oh, all right. You too, young woman. I'm hurting all of you. Get upstairs. I'm going. And don't you figure on trying no tricks like jumping out the window. It's all bog and quicksand on that side of the house. Well, thanks for the information. All right, now. You two galettes, take this here bedroom and redhead the one down the hall. Uh, oh, we, we, uh, just a minute. We uh, we can't do that. Huh? We're not. Well, We're not married. Uh, no. We're cuss. What kind of talk is it? They're not Galettes. Now they're not even married. I hope that's double talk. That's Galettes all over. Why don't I just shoot him now? No, no, no. Listen, you don't understand. I, I understand I... enough. Get in there before I forget myself. Come on, Johnny. Well, oh. well oh. all the unreasonable cusses. Johnny, what are we going to do? Uh, we're going to get out of here somehow, some way. Oh, no, no. Let's wait for the sheriff. No, no, no. I'm not going on Mr. Corbett's promises. He's just trigger happy. I want to look out this window. Yep. The old guy's right, all right. Bob. Maybe quicksand. Well, then there's no way out. Now, listen. I'm going to sneak out in the hall and explore the second floor. Maybe I can find a back stairway or something. If we can just get out of here, we might be able to find a boat. Oh, Johnny, you know, and... please be careful now. If he should catch you... No, 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 don't worry. I'm, I'm just going to stick my head out first and I'll open the door softly. Do you see him? No. It's okay. Wish me luck. Oh. Where was he, Johnny? He was hiding at the top of the stairs, the old buzzard. Well, looks like we're going to spend the evening in the bedroom. Yeah. He was so wild-eyed to fix Mr. Gallette up with a wife. No. Now what? No, nothing. Well, that's what I thought. Oh, excuse me, Johnny. Oh, I'm so tired from all this excitement. Yeah, don't blame you. Hey, uh, where are you going? Well, I thought I'd lie down for a while. No, 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 Terry, stop it. I, I... But I'm tired, Johnny. I'll just take my shoes off. Oh, okay. I'm going to get out of here. Rifle and no rifle, I'm going to switch bedrooms with Bertha. Stories about the bloody Gillette, but I never Shh, Please, listen. I want you to go in the other room. I thought you. Oh, oh, oh. With another woman. No, no, you got this wrong now. I uh... reckon not. Ain't no question now you're a Gillette. Come on, get. You two young women, throw that blanket around you. You don't have to wave that gun in my face. Come on, get down the hall. You're going in this here main bedroom. All of you. Johnny, what happened? Yeah. Oh. Tagged again. Now stay in there, all three of you. I'm a going to spend the night right outside this here door with my gun. Well, it suits me. Two's company and three's propriety. And if and that little person Jones don't get back here pretty quick, I'm going to shoot you anyway. Oh, that possum Jones is liable to shoot you, Grandpappy. He's the real Johnny Gillette. No, no, tell him. Oh, well, it doesn't matter now, Johnny. He's gone. He'll bring back the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> that little word, Jean Gillette. <laughs> I sure admire you joking, ma'am. I'm not joking. It's true. Forget it, ma'am. It ain't gonna work. Come the first crack of dawn, I'm gonna get you, Mr. Gillette. That's the promise of old Chuck Corber. <laughs> Both a sleeping sound. Yeah, that's a sleeping sound, all right. Now, if we can just creep past him without waking him up, maybe we can get downstairs. Mm, be careful. It's getting light enough for us to find a pooch. Oh. Just let that pooch off. Come on, make it snappy, Terry. Oh, Chuck's stirring. Duck! Cut your foot, I think that you make one step more, I'll be plumbed into prediction. Get away! 
Get through stairs. Oh, what, what was that shooting? Oh, the just the old feudy shop opening up for the day, Miss Ross. Uh, there wasn't any reason to fire at us, Mr. Corbett. Oh. We were just stretching our legs. Yeah, never seen any better fitter for it than yourn, Miss Gillette. Young widow women like you won't have no trouble getting yourself a new man. Hear that? Old Daniel said it's time for a corpse. Come on, Gillette. I sure hate to do this. But ain't no use waiting when you got a chore to do. Oh, please, Mr. Carver. It, it isn't sunrise yet. And no sense quibbling over a few measly minutes. Where well, you prefer to get it, you lady. Oh, no, no, look, look, you're really going too far asking me to call my own shot. All right. Here it comes, Gillette. No, wait, oh, wait, 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 wait. Somebody's coming. John. Yeah. Oh, Jonesy. Good old Jonesy. Oh, hello. Oh, I hope I didn't disturb anybody. Well, Cuts me bow legged if it ain't that little possum back again. Jonesy, where's the sheriff? I, I... I didn't bring him. Huh? You didn't bring... I didn't get to town. It was so dark and there were so many awful noises and I, I got scared and I got lost. Oh, oh. so that's what you two were planning at. Oh, we sent the raven to find land and he lands back here. Well, the light in the Galette house was the only one I could see anywhere. It was so dark and something kept saying, woo, woo, right in my ear. Yes, well, that Galette gun is about to make a different sound in my ear. Well, that settles it. This party makes no Galette. Jonesy, tell him the truth. Well, I... Well, nobody can tell me any Galette will lose his way in Swamp. Why, the whole seed and breed of them was spawned here. Now, uh, just a minute, Corba. Uh, you've known all the galettes. Now, do I look like a galette? Uh, I can't say as you do. But you sounded like one the way you was bragging in the boat. Oh, well, I was just doing that to give this this Ross girl here something to write about. Looks as if you're stuck with your story. Mm -hmm. uh, quit your caterwauling, all of you. I ain't going to wait no longer. Be late getting back to my cabin for my breakfast, the way it is. Too bad about you and your breakfast. Well, I've eaten my grits half an hour after sun up for 70 years. And ain't gonna let no galette stop me now. Oh, well, it's, it's, uh, say, why don't you start uh, pulling us back in your flat bottom yacht, and uh, then you can just drop us overboard, you know, when you're ready. Yes, that'd save time. Yeah, no grave digging required. No fuss, no bother. <laughs> Catch me upside down. It's a smart idea. I'll do it. Uh, <laughs> Go on. Get moving down to the boat. All of you. Come on. Oh, I think it's a terrible idea, Miss Ross. If Corbett isn't murderous with his bullets, he'll drown us in that awful swamp. Tough either way, little man. Especially for the one of you that isn't. Galette. Shut up, Daniel. You're no more impatient than I be. Get in the boat, all of you. Terry, Terry. Whatever made you suggest this taking for us to arrive, Johnny? When we get in the boat, you start a hair falling match with Berta. Oh. Step along there, you. Don't do so much talking. Are you Plasm? Uh, me? Yep, you take the pole. Uh, yes, sir. Hey, uh, uh, Corber. Yes? Uh, how about letting me take a hand with a pole, you know? Uh, no, you don't. No? You uh, sit right there in the back pew where I can keep my collect pointed at you. And don't wrap the boat. Already in water over ten feet deep, and I can't swim. Oh, you can't. Uh, well, that's too bad. <laughs> oh, uh, Terry. Roger. Uh, move over, you. Huh? Who are you talking to? You, Brother Ross. Stop crowding me. Why, you snipping. Don't, don't shove me. I'll show you. Hey, what's hey, going on here? Sick of Terry. Give me the old Galat no. one, too. Hey, uh, when did that your record? Uh, good. Oh, 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 my hair. Will you? I'll oh, hit you. Do it. 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 Hey, Terry, where are you? Here. Here, Johnny. Just swim back to the landing. All, all right. I'll, I'll get Corbin. <laughs> I can't swim, can the Lord? All right, then. Let go, let go of your rifle. I, I, I dropped it. Quit shoving my head up. Well, I think I'll jump you once more for just for luck. Come on. Help. Help. I can't swim. Take it easy, Jonesy. I've got you. Terry, you okay? Yep. Well, so is Corbett. Wait till I dredge him up. Come on. <laughs> Where's Berta? Here I am. Oh, I see how there's any water left for you to swim in after what I swallow. Oh, are you all right? Um, I guess so. Oh, why didn't you let a fella in on your little scheme? Oh, sorry. I had to work fast. I don't know how I can thank you for saving my life, Miss Travis. Oh, but I didn't save your life, Jonesy. Oh, yes, you did. Oh, no, I didn't. You saved 
saved Carver, didn't he, Johnny? What? Uh, huh? uh, oh, oh, yes, right you are, Terry. That's uh, that's just what he did. Here, Jonesy, grab hold of Carver. Huh? Quick, before he comes to Oh, oh, oh. Get yes, hand. Can he kill me, Gilly? I got it. Oh, no, no. <laughs> not now you can't, Corbin. <laughs> what's that? What, what's that? Well, you can't kill a man who's just saved your life, can you? Go on, Jonesy. Tell him how you saved him from drowning. <laughs> that little uh, possum? That little possum is the last of the bloody galettes, whether mm-hmm. you believe it or not. Is that the unpunished truth? I'm afraid it is. I, yes, I'm the real Gene Gillette. And you drug me up from the bottom of this here swamp? Well, he still had a hold of your collar when he came to it, didn't he? Uh, curse me crook, nigga. <laughs> I reckon there's nothing else to do. <laughs> Put it egg let. Well, <laughs> Johnny, I think we're entitled to a little congratulations ourselves. Mm-hmm. Put it air, partner. As one life save it to another, I certainly will. All right, you two, break it up, break it up. I got to get to a form of the story. Oh, oh, Miss Ross, will I still get the twenty-five hundred dollars? You certainly will, or your name isn't Jean Gallet. Now let's not go through that again. No. <laughs> Here's uh, Berta's article, John. Yeah, How I Helped to End the Corber Gallet Feud by Berta Ross. Hmm. Hmm, listen to this. I found Johnny Gallet, the last of the bloody Gallet, to be a baby-faced feudist whose innocent appearance seems merely to mask an iron nerve. Oh, oh, oh. By sheer stark courage, he managed to outwit and outfight wily old Chuck Corber, a deadly killer who has laid to rest more than his allotment of Gillette. Well, don't you love that? No mention of results incorporated. No. Oh, you wouldn't know that we had ever even been near the Black Swamp to hear yeah. her story. After my flawless performance as a backward, backwards boy. Mm. You know, I noticed you weren't a bit backward about wandering into Bertha's room after she'd mm. gone to bed that oh, night. No, no, no. Just let's leave sleeping ducks lie. You know, I never will be sure what would have happened if old Corba hadn't been around. Now, that, Sugar, is another bedtime story. Just mm. uh, remind me to tell you to you sometime, huh? Tune in again next week at the same time for another half hour of thrill, suspense, and laughs with Results Incorporated, starring Lloyd Nolan and Claire Trevor. You'll enjoy listening to this new comedy mystery program, so make a date, won't you, this same time next week. Tonight's script was written by Leonard St. Clair and Stuart Sterling, based on characters created by Lawrence Edmund Taylor. Music was by Russ Crump. This program originated in the Donnelly Studios in Hollywood. Bob O'Connor speaking. This is Mutual. Mm-hmm.